Cross. Open three is good. Shot pours it all. Oh, oh, nice. Huff shooting is scored. Hello and welcome to Sports Jam. I'm John Jacobson. And I'm Jay Wilcox. This week on the show, it's round two as Hopkins and Wyzetta tangle in volleyball. And we'll meet a pair of soccer stars from Breck in our Sports Jam Spotlight. And I'll talk soccer with the Maple Grove girls. We'll get started with prep football. Champlin Park scored an emotional win over previously unbeaten Blaine in week four. Rebels didn't want to have a letdown as they faced defending state champion Osseo in what turned out to be a wild one. Down seven to nothing. Champlin Park's Ben Otto goes up top, and Deontay Bronson makes a spinning grab near the sideline in the end zone to tie it 7-7 after a quarter. Second quarter, and Otto rolls right and finds Cameron Witt, who outfights the defender for the ball. It's 14-14, and remember that combination. Osseo surges back into the lead. Parnell Taylor has a big gap, cuts to the outside and scores. And Osseo takes a 21-14 lead on the Rebels. Champlin Park's turn. Otto finds Marcus Hill, makes a nice move, and battles his way just over the goal line. And he's in. It's 21-21 after a very entertaining first half with more fireworks to come. Third quarter, Otto hits Hill, breaks a tackle, and gets in. It's 28-21 Rebels, a huge night for Hill and Otto. Osseo is an answer. Taylor has a nice gap to run through and makes a cut late to score. 250 yards for Taylor in the game. Osseo evens it up 28 all through three quarters. Just over two minutes left in the game. Jeff Ikior just squeezes over the goal line. Before the ball comes on, Osseo retakes the lead, 35-28. Back comes Champlin Park. Otto hits Witt on the out route. Rebels pull with them 35-34 with 44 seconds left. And they go for two. And the win, and it's Otto DeWitt for the winning points in a 36-35 wild victory for Champlin Park. Maple Grove and Wyzetta each made the final eight in Class 6A football last fall, but it hasn't been the same kind of season for the Crimson or Trojans so far. Each look to get back into the win column as they met up on homecoming night at Maple Grove. Maple Grove sets the tone on the first drive. Quarterback Brad Davison with a nice gainer, and it sets up a Davison sneak. Maple Grove scores quickly to go up 7-0. Second quarter, and Davison hits Jack Dugan on a swing pass. He gets a block and squeezes through traffic and into the corner of the end zone for a 14-0 Crimson lead. And their defense dominates. Ben Paschke stuffs Alec Underhills. The Trojans struggle to get anything going. Ryan Hanscom takes the handoff, runs into traffic, but bounces right and gets in for the touchdown. It's 21-0 in a dominant first half for Maple Grove. In the third quarter, Davison will hit Eric Christensen in the flat, and he zips in for the touchdown. Maple Grove breaks a two-game losing streak with a 35-7 win. Cutting down on mistakes was a key. Honestly, uh, the other two games we felt like we didn't, like the other teams didn't beat us, but that we honestly beat ourselves. We had just so many mental mistakes, and when you put yourself back 20 yards, like almost every single possession, there's just no way to succeed. So uh, we just need to tighten up our game and honestly just play the way we've been playing all year because we've been running it good on people. So. Also, Totino Grace stays unbeaten, but it was not easy. The Eagles hold off Blaine in a 21-14 win. Grace was held to just over 100 yards rushing in that game. Park Center ended Cooper's season a year ago in the Section 5-5A playoffs. The Hawks were looking for a little revenge last Friday when the Pirates are looking to hand Cooper its first loss of the season. First quarter, Pirates quarterback Jamal Brown throws a short pass to Malcolm Richards who makes a nice move at the 30-yard line and heads to the Cooper end zone. Looks like it's a touchdown for the Pirates, but Park Center's called for an illegal man downfield, wiping out the score. Second quarter, Park Center's defense gets a turnover. Blake Wilkins dives, tips the ball up in the air. Isaac Mansfield grabs it for the interception. However, the Pirates can't take advantage of the INT. The Hawks' defense is tough and physical. Dominic Kiwan with the tackle for loss here. This game scoreless at halftime. But that changes early in the second half. Cameron King. Zips a pass to Jordan Brown in the back of the end zone for a touchdown. Cooper's on the board first. 
And they lead it seven to nothing. On the ensuing kickoff, the ball is bobbled here, picked up, and then fumbled. And there's a mad scramble for the football in the end zone. The Hawks finally cover it. Terrence, Terrence Nicholson will get the recovery for the touchdown. And just like that, Cooper leads 14 to nothing. Later in the third quarter, same score, Pirates back to punt. The high but short punt grabbed by Phoenix Sproles at the 49-yard line. And this guy can go, and he does here. Sproles brings this one back. 49 yards for a touchdown. Hawks add two more TDs in the fourth quarter, scoring all their points after halftime. They roll past Park Center 35-0. Also Armstrong playing at Irondale. First quarter of a scoreless game when Irondale's Brandon White floats the pass to the corner of the end zone. Sean Sutherland brings it down for a night's touchdown. In the second quarter, the Falcons answer. Nick Svensson passes to Isaiah Poster, and he gets loose for a 39-yard score, and we are tied up at 7. And late in the first half, Armstrong bids for another touchdown, but the pass to the end zone is picked off by Irondale's Nicholas Ellingson. It's tied 7-7 at halftime. Armstrong wins 18-14 to improve to 3-2. and two. The Providence Academy football team won three of its first four games. The Lions hope to keep up the winning ways on their homecoming night as they took on New Life Academy. New Life gets on the board first. Eagles quarterback Adam Bush burrows in from a yard out and New Life leads it 7-0 after a quarter. Second quarter and the Lions finish off their drive. Jackson Baird up the middle on an eight-yard touchdown run. Their try for two fails though and Providence trails 7-6. Later, the Lions defense steps up and makes a play. Baird playing both ways will get an interception to end the New Life drive. It's still 7-6 New Life at halftime. Third quarter and the Providence defense gets another pick. Bush goes long with the pass and is intercepted by Jackson Sunderby deep in Lions territory. Now to the fourth quarter and Baird makes another big play. As he'll scamper 36 yards for a touchdown for the winning points. That's all the scoring in the game. Providence wins 12 to 7. So the Lions improve now to 4 and 1. And John, definitely not an easy one, but uh, you have to feel good when you've won four of your first five like they have. Yeah, they have. And uh, Hopkins wins again. They improve to 3 and 2. Starting to come on a little bit. They play Wyzetta this week. Stay tuned. When Sports Jam returns, you'll see highlights from several local top 10 volleyball teams, plus soccer and more. Welcome back to Sports Jam and time to turn our attention to volleyball. Well, Hopkins and Wyzetta are in the top 10 in Class 3A. The Royals are ranked fifth, the Trojans sixth. Second meeting between the teams this fall came last week. Hopkins looking for the season sweep. Wyzetta and Blue on the left. Great dig by Abby Shee. Mackenzie Greshel, the back set to Morgan Bowfield for the kill. Wyzetta down 15-14 in the first set. Hopkins closes strong. The set to Jasmine Martin who attacks from the three meter line and scores the point. Royals take set one 25 18. In the second set the Royals jump out to a big lead. Wysetta keeps the ball alive but the Royals get into their offense. Martin with a big swing off the set from Tara Lee. Royals lead 17 8. Off the Trojan serve Lee takes the pass. And sets to Anna Erickson for the soft tip of the net for a point. Hopkins takes this set 25-20. And the Royals close it out in three. An outside set for Erickson whose big swing gives Hopkins a 16-11 lead. The Royals win a 25-15. They improved to 5-0 in the late conference with a sweep of Wyzetta. The Royals strong fundamental play is a big strength. I think we, in practice, we really work on the basics, and that's like we start our practice every day with just passing from our knees, and I think we do basics passing really well. I think our offense can be faster, quicker, and I think we can serve tougher. Champlin Park is also having an outstanding volleyball season. Tatino Grace hoping for an upset as they visited John Yunker's second-ranked Rebels. Champlin Park rolls in the first set. Sydney Hilly pounds it home for a kill on the way to a 25-16 Rebels win. Tatino Grace comes out much stronger though in set two. Izzy Summers finds the open spot on the court as the teams trade leads in the beginning part of the set. But Champlin Park takes over. Setter Izzy Ashburn with good body control to tip it over while avoiding the net and it's 19-11 Rebels. 
Hilly is unstoppable in the second set as she gets the Eagles back on their heels. The Rebels pull away to win 25 to 12. And they control the third set from the start. Allie Miller with the kill here as Champlin Park rolls to a sweep over Grace. Like Champlin Park and Hopkins, Heritage Christian Academy is aiming for a repeat visit to the state tournament. The Eagles are rated fourth in Class A. They are on their home court to face Legacy Christian. Heritage on the right in the first set. They get into their offense and set up back row to Matty Torrey for the kill. 17-9 lead as they start strong. Strong serve for the Eagles leads to an overpass by Legacy. And Heritage takes advantage. They'll set left side to Megan Smith for the kill. On the way to a 25-15 win in the opening set. And they play well in the second set. Good passing leads to an attack by Margaret Wetterstrom. She'll put it away for a 22-16 lead. Eagles take this one 25-19. More of the same in the third. Her passing for Heritage. Sophie Jesuits delivers the kill. Heritage Christian Academy sweeps legacy. The Eagles are now 16 and 5 on the season. It's a tight race for girls soccer at the top of the Lake Conference. Wyzetta beat Hopkins 1-0 just over two weeks ago, but the Trojans had lost to both Minnetonka and Edina since. Trojans looking to get back on track as they face the Royals again last week. Wyzetta will score first off the throw in the ball to flex off the Hopkins keeper right to Ava Brewer who scores and the Trojans lead it one to nothing. Later in the opening half perfect pass ahead and it's Lamin Douglas getting behind the Wyzetta defense to score even in the game up at one and that's the score at halftime as well. Second half, Morgan Turner gets a penalty kick for Wysetta and she'll deliver, netting her team high 12th goal of the season. It's 2-1 Wysetta. Turner picks up an assist on the final goal of the match. She'll pass to Emily Dillon for the goal. Wysetta goes on to beat Hopkins. 3-1 Trojans is the final. Wyzetta's boys team enters the final week of the regular season unbeaten. An unusual matchup, Wyzetta's Patrick Wea goes up against his brother, Clarence Wea of Hopkins. Wyzetta gets on the board, the pass is chipped ahead. McLean King scores just as he collides with two defenders, including Royals goalkeeper Ryan St. Clair, who leaves with an injury, and it's 1-0 Wyzetta at halftime. Second half, and Patrick Wea sneaks a shot through the Royals' Sam Eklund, who came in to replace St. Clair. And Walter Smith delivers a long ball and Wea waits for the bounce and then shields off the defender to score for a 3-0 lead. Wyzetta adds two more goals on their way to a 5-0 win. In adapted athletics, soccer is the sport for the fall. Two local teams played an early season game last week. Robinsdale Hopkins PI Division team visiting Park Center first half. Andy Hansen plays it in front. He's your joiner. Taps it in for a Robins goal. Start of a good game for him. Haley Engritson takes the shot for the Robins. Elaine Charlton puts it away on the rebound. Robins lead 4-0 at halftime. Second half, Hansen with a nice through ball. The joiner, he'll bury one. And a nice little touch shot for the Robins. Madeline Osk's first shot is wide, but a rebound kick. Caroms off the defender and goes in for a 7-0 Robins lead. And that's the final. The Robins are now 4-0. And Jay, believe it or not, it's already playoff time in high school girls tennis section play will start up this week. Now the weather's been so great but that could be changing this week so they'll obviously uh, have to battle to get some of those matches in. Straight ahead in our Sports Jam Spotlight meet a pair of Breck soccer stars who are hoping to lead their team back to the state tournament. The Breck boys soccer team is ranked second in Class A. In this week's Sports Jam Spotlight, we meet two senior stars for the Mustangs who are looking to wrap up their careers in style. They're a dynamic duo that hopes to lead Breck back to the state tournament. Senior forward Avi Eller, senior midfielder Garrett Opperman were all state last season and may well be again this fall. They both play different spots in high school soccer than they're used to. Yeah, my club team, I play more out wide, and for this team, I play more in the middle, and I'm relied on a lot more to score more goals, so it's fun. It's a different aspect, but I like it a lot. For Breck soccer, I'm playing in a different role than I am usually, where in club and outside of Breck soccer, I'm playing more as a defender, a central defender. So on this team, it's more of being a, a distributor while still goal scoring a little bit. Um, it's more of 
dictating where we go and how we move as a team. They're both great players, but with different skill sets. Opperman's impressed with Eller. He's an amazing player. He's extremely fast and good with his feet, so he's not just a superb athlete, but he's also, his technical ability is, is extraordinary. I've been playing with him since we were about 12 years old, so we know, I know what he wants to do before he even knows sometimes. Fantastic with the ball on his feet. He's fast, so he can get behind defenses. So he pre pre uh, presents multiple threats. He can do, you know, he, he can hold, hold the ball up and allow numbers to get into the attack. He can go it himself. Um, he can attack in a variety of ways. So the two of them together are, are really important to our team. As for Opperman, he's the focal point of the midfield for the Mustangs. He's been a great teammate. We've been friends forever. He's kind of a dynamic. He passes to me, so it's good stuff. He's the kind of guy who just controls the pace of the game in the central midfield. Um, he's really good. He's got good vision. He's uh, really good at um, seeing the opportunities that are there and recognizing when to go forward and when to circulate the ball. Breck is hoping to duplicate a magical 2015 run to state. Avi and Garrett pick moments from last fall as their career highlights so far. I'll probably make it to the state final. Last year we had a young team and we made it really far, so that was great. A special memory I've had was definitely winning a section final because that's always been a goal of mine to make it to the state tournament. So that's probably the most special moment I've had. Both guys hope to get into the business world and college soccer will help them get started on that journey as they attend very highly regarded schools. So I'm going to Columbia University and um, I decided it was right for me. I wanted to be in a big city, play Division One, so it's a good choice for me. I went out there and stayed with the player, and I really liked the team, the guys, the coaches. Everything was cool, um, and the campus is nice and secluded, and I like that, even though it's in a big city, so that was cool. I chose Northwestern University uh, because playing in the Big Ten was something that I was interested in, while also uh, going to a very high academic school. And Columbia was also one of the choices that I had to balance, but I think I, I picked Northwestern in the end because it's a home away from home. Looks like Avi Eller and Garrett Opperman have bright futures ahead of them. They hope it starts with another trip to the state tournament. Opperman just slice through the defense Opperman. and hammer it home. Breck is 10-2-2 two and, two and takes on Heritage Christian and Maple Grove this week, then it's section tournament time. John talks girls soccer with the Maple Grove Crimson when we come back. Welcome back to Sports Jam. We are in the final week of the regular season in high school soccer. Maple Grove girls, one of the best teams in the area, and they join us now on the show. We'll start with Sarah Limita. And Sarah, tell me about this season so far and how you think you, your team's played. Obviously a great record. How do you feel your, your team's done overall? Yeah, we have a pretty promising record right now. Um, I think we just need to focus on a few of the more like final things. Uh, I know we're gonna tighten some up, some things up at the next few practices and be ready for sections. How much is, fun is it to play with this much talent? You got a lot of really good players all over this field, right? Oh yeah, it's a lot of fun. Um, kind of grateful for the experience to be with all the teammates that I have. It was great seeing everyone who came out this year to play with us. And I don't know, it's just, pro it's com you have confidence on the field knowing that your team will get the job done. You talked about tightening things up before sections. What things do you need to improve on yet before the playoffs start here next week? Um, I mean, we've been tightening up our defense a little bit more. Otherwise, just keeping our touches ready and uh, a couple of tactical things. What, what have your team done best, do you think? That's a tough one. I think we do a lot of things well. Um, we came together with a lot of like different ages and like club teams. I know there's a lot of like diversity on our team and we all just came together really well. It didn't take us long to like learn each other's like um, strengths and weaknesses. So yeah, I don't know. We There's a lot of stuff that we've done well this year. Well, congratulations on the good start to the year and good luck in the playoffs. Thank you. Meredith Hawkinson, a, a great year for you personally and your team. As you look back on the matches you played so far, how, how do you feel about the, the season? One of the things that I think we really have done well is we've came together and played really well together. What Sarah was saying, just with like a ton of different teams and everything, I think we've really meshed well together and gotten to know each other really well. When you go down these last few games of the regular season and get ready for the playoffs, do you start thinking ahead of the section and trying to improve your game to get ready for the, those important playoff games? Um, right now, I think we're just taking it day by day and starting with just the next game. And then once it gets closer, I think we'll probably do like some video on the teams. But for now, it's just what's our next game and what's our 
the big opportunity that's coming next. How much have you talked about trying to get to the state tournament? Is it too early to even think about that, or do you girls talk about it? Um, it's definitely one of our goals, and I think everyone has the same goal on getting to the state tournament. And so that's like something that we all have together that's good. Meredith, good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. Coach Ben Laban, you've been through this before. Tell me about this group and what makes this uh, team special. Well, you can see that we're uh, we're pretty lighthearted. Um, kids come to practice, we have a good time. I think they really hit it on the head that we've got a we've got a connected group. Uh, they really do look out for each other. Um, we've had almost every kid on the team get a point. We've got scoring from I think after yesterday, after 14, uh, 14 or 15 out of our 19 kids. Um, it's really a team effort. Uh, this is uh, one of our most offensive groups and also one of our most defensive groups. So we're getting it done on both ends of the field. It's a pretty good combination. Uh, yeah, that's the one that every coach you'd like to have uh, both ends of that. So we just want to be able to put it all together at the right time. You mentioned a connected team. How much does that help you as a coach and how much do you think that helps them as a team that they, they connect so well and get along well? Uh, in a big group game like soccer, you've got 11 people on the, on the field at a time. There's some times where you might not talk to a kid on the other side of the field for 40 minutes. So you've got to trust that they trust each other. Uh, when things get challenging, they've got to be able to trust that someone behind them, in front of them is going to do their job and I'm going to do my job well and the and, you know, person next to me is going to do their job well. Going into the last week of the season, you're number two in the QRF in your section. Do you look at that and, and try to envision playoff possibilities ahead of time? Uh, right now we've got a, a week. Uh, the QRF is going to come into play as we go into seeding. Um, you know, it gets to the point though, you've got to, whoever you're playing, you've got to win that game. So it, it becomes a big deal for about six hours at the seeding meeting and then after you get done, it's we've still got to play the games and, and win. Great season so far. Good luck the rest of the way. Thanks a lot. Ben Levon, head coach of the Maple Grove Crimson. They will finish up the regular season this coming Thursday against Anoka and then the playoffs get underway in Section 5AA next week. We'll take a break and come back and finish Sports Jam after this. First, our Plays of the Week. Local Vote 2016 focuses on the candidates that make key decisions affecting your life close to home as you decide how to vote for people who will represent you on your city council, on school boards, and in the state legislature. Hear from the candidates themselves first, whether it's a candidate profile on 12 News, a local political forum, or election night coverage. Find it all on Channel 12. The beautiful Elm Creek Park Reserve is once again the site for the Autumn Woods Classic Races on Saturday, October 15th. Find out more through the In the Community tab at 12.tv. Don't miss the 25th Annual New Hope Community Prayer Breakfast on Friday, October 28th at Cooper High School. Find out more through the In the Community tab at 12.tv. Our game of the week is a good West Metro District football matchup between 4-1 Champlain Park and unbeaten and top-ranked Totino Grace. The game is Friday at 7 at Jim Totino Field. You can watch it live on Channel 12 and our HD Channel 799 as well as online at 12.tv. Catch the game replay Saturday night at 10 or Sunday morning at 10. And that wraps up this week's Sports Jam. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.